This is hands down the worst chicken pot pie I've ever made. Just look at it. It's similar to other chicken pies, except it doesn't have a bunch of boring vegetables in it, and instead has loads of bacon and the crust is made with the grease of said bacon. Here I am, wasting my time preparing a pound of bacon to go into the oven. I was trying to render the fat out of it, but I found out that frying works way better for that. Not a lot of fat came out in the process and I'm still trying to clean this dumb pan because it got stuck so bad. This way I could stand over it obsessively and make sure nothing stuck. The lower heat lets the fat melt out without burning the meat. My stopping point was when almost all the bacon was crispy. Let's see how much grease came out of this. Looks like a little less than half a cup. That should be enough to have the top layer of crust. I need this to not be liquid before I use this to make the crust, so into the freezer it goes. Luckily, I have another half cup of bacon grease from sometime this year, so I'll pull that out now so it can soften up a bit. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to cut up some green onions and put them in the freezer. Lots of people do that trick with the frozen peas to keep them from overcooking, so I'm trying that with these. Now that the bacon grease from the freezer is softened, I start to work on the bottom layer of crust. While watching myself struggle to shove all this grease and flour into the food processor, I wish I had remembered to pick up a pastry blender at the store. But anyway, this is about a half cup of bacon grease in here and a cup of flour. I'm only blending it until just combined. So just dump that into a large bowl and whoops, there go the blades. Then I just add enough ice cold water to get it to form into a ball. That goes into the fridge for a while, about a half hour. I won't show the whole process all over again, but here's the dough for the top crust. Look how dry it is. I was overzealous with the flour and I eventually had to mix in some butter to get it to be somewhat workable. Maybe I'll use a pound and a half of bacon next time. I retrieve the first batch of dough out of the fridge and roll it out as best as I can, but it's still a crumbly mess. So here I am, jamming it into place by hand. It's not the first time I've done this, nor will it be my last. I heat up the residual bacon grease and toss in some shredded chicken. This is normally when you start the slower cooking vegetables, but number one, I'm too cool to have vegetables in this, and number two, I only cook the chicken in the slow cooker, so it's kind of bland, and I'm trying to brown it to create some more flavor. But seriously, certain vegetables might pair well with what's going in here. I bet cauliflower and Brussels sprouts would be really good. It's sticking a lot, and it gets worse before it gets better. Here's a big knob of butter to add to the total fat content, and I just stir that in until it melts, and dump in a third of a cup of flour. As I let the flour heat up, I also use this time as an opportunity to break up the chicken a little more with the spoon. After the flour is mixed in and coating everything, I figure why not add all this gelatinous stuff that came out of the chicken when I slow cooked it. Look at that! It's starting to look like it's turning into something. Almost like I know what I'm doing. Finally, some of the bits on the bottom of the pan start to come up with the addition of the liquid. Watch very carefully how much salt I add. Don't add that much. Half or even a third of that I think would have been good. Remember, bacon is salty on its own. The pepper on the other hand, I was happy with how much I added. Looks like I cranked it like that about 40 times. Now a pint of buttermilk. This along with the dill is going to be what gives it the ranch flavor. I just let that heat up for about a minute and add some dill and grated garlic. I think there's about two pretty large cloves in there. After I get that stirred in, I add the bacon and stir that in, then turn the heat off. I'll just let this sit here for a while while I roll out my hideous looking top layer of crust. Now, that should be cooled down enough that it won't quickly melt the crust or the frozen green onions, which I totally didn't almost forget. Again, I'm copying the trick that people use with the frozen peas and the more traditional versions of chicken pot pies to keep them from overcooking and maybe preserve some of their green color. Speaking of the hideous crust, there it is. Hope you like it. Watch as I consider poking a vent hole in and realize I don't have to because the crust is falling apart anyway. I put this in the oven at 425 Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. I'm using John from Preppy Kitchen's Baking Directions for chicken pot pie as a guide and following the temperatures and times exactly. So after 20 minutes, I reduce the temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer for 40 minutes. 
Here it comes out of the oven. That's why it's on the tray, by the way. You know how they say the first slice of pie never looks good? Well, that certainly holds true here. Yeah, those green onions didn't stay very bright green, did they? But who cares? This looks like garbage anyway. But you know what? It tastes great. I told you earlier that this is the worst chicken pot pie I've ever made, but omitted the fact that it's the only chicken pot pie that I've ever made. It certainly might be the least aesthetically pleasing thing I've made on this channel, but I'd say it's the best tasting thing I've made up to this point. I would have just added a little less salt, and the top layer seemed a little dry. It was very crumbly and almost had a dusty texture. Maybe it had too much flour. Next time I might just do a top crust out of however much bacon grease I can get out of a pound or a pound and a half of bacon. This was a lot of work, especially filming it and having to wash my hands constantly, so only doing a top crust would cut down in time. So yeah, give this whole bacon grease crust thing a try, even if you don't follow exactly what I did, and let me know what you'd put in it besides bacon. If you made it this far into the video, your attentiveness is appreciated. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like this video if you did, and consider subscribing for more videos of me trying fun new things in the kitchen.